Willis MB, Brake Line Installation Part 3, Master Cylinder to Axles. Scott Schiller for Team G503, G503 TV with Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. This is the third video, the final video in a three-part series that I've done on installing the brake lines on a 1943 Willis MB. For the most part, all the G503 vehicles and most of the civilian early vehicles are the same way. Uh, the first video was the installation on the front axle. The second was the installation on the rear axle. And in this video, I'll be going from the master cylinder to the front and rear axles. If you'd like to subscribe to what we're doing on Team G503, you can do so after you watch the video. Got a lot to show you in this one again, so let's jump right into it. Before we get started, I'll show you all the fasteners that attach to the end of the master cylinder. It will be difficult to see these in the Jeep. This is the machined bolt and it's part number 637605 that kind of holds everything together. Here we've got the brass Y fitting which is part number A557 and that's what your lines are attached to. There's two copper crush washers or gaskets with different inside diameters. The larger of the two diameters is part number 637605 and the smaller diameter is part number 637604. And last but not least, we've got the brake lamp switch, which is part number A1271. I'll show you how this assembly goes together outside of the Jeep, because like I said earlier, it's going to be a little difficult to see when we get inside the frame rail. First, what you want to do is take the bolt, and you want to slide over the larger diameter of the copper crush washers. Then the brass Y will insert there. You can see the hole there where your fluids will travel through. Then we'll take the smaller diameter copper crush washer and that'll go on the outside. Now that whole system there is going to screw into the front side of the master brake cylinder. Those two copper crush washers are very important because they create the seal around the Y and keep the fluid inside. On the female added thread of the bolt, you thread in the brake lamp switch, simple like this, but we'll have to tighten that down and that's going to get a little difficult inside the frame rail too. We've only got two more lines to run for the system and the larger of the lines is going to run down the driver's side frame rail from the front to the back from the master cylinder. It runs down the inside of what I'll call the C-channel, comes outside, is attached to a clip, and then goes up in the inside of the cross member and is attached to the rubber flex hose right underneath the machine gun mount. The longest of all the brake lines in the whole system is part number A5224 and it's the line that goes from the master cylinder to the rear 15 inch flex hose. You'll notice two tags here on the line and what they're telling us is to hold this radius against a flat surface and straighten it out. Hold the brake line between the two tags at a 90 degree to a hard surface. I'm just working here on the workbench. And what you'll do is you'll hold the line down, keeping pressure on it, and gently fold out the top piece or the piece that goes into the flex hose to about a 90 degree angle. Keep steady pressure on both ends of the line and use the table to work the radius out. Don't overbend the angle either because when you get to the back side of the cross member, you will have to make an adjustment to fasten it correctly. I've left this just a little bit underbent, and now we can go ahead and install it onto the frame. Orient the brake line with the fitting facing up as shown, and feed it behind the pedal shaft mechanism and up the side rail of the driver's side of the frame. Once you get the end close to where the master cylinder is, and the 90 degree bend we just made towards the rear cross member, you'll see a small little clip on the side of the frame. We'll clip it in there for the time being just to hold it while we work on the rest of the system. The last line we have to install is part number A1377. Notice the short bend and then the long bend that goes to the back. This is the end that connects to the Y fitting near the master cylinder, and this end goes over the bracket on the frame that has the engine mount on it. We're looking over the top side of the driver's side rail and down onto where the master cylinder is located, and you can see where I've laid the tube number 1377, right next to the master cylinder. You can see the end of the long line inside of the frame rail. That's the most difficult one to attach to the brass Y, but if you reach down in there, you'll have enough room and just to put the fitting on finger tight for the time being on the Y. If you need to, you can disconnect the long line from the clip on the rear of the frame, so give yourself a little bit more room to attach the Y. Then attach the front line to the Y. Again, I'm just finger tightening these for the time being to allow myself movement so I can adjust these and put them onto the master cylinder. The Y fits on the master cylinder exactly like that. Before you install the Y, you'll have to reach down in front of the master cylinder and remove the protective plug that comes from the factory. Now we'll go back to the assembly that I showed you in the beginning of the video on the bench. We'll take our machine bolt and the larger diameter inside copper crush washer and install it onto the bolt. 
Then we can reach down inside the frame rail and position the Y exactly how it should go onto the master cylinder. Slip the bolt and the copper crush washer through the Y and then install the smaller inside diameter copper crush washer onto that bolt and then thread it into the master cylinder fitting. It's a little difficult to get your hands inside and get everything all lined up. I've left both ends of the lines rear and front loose so I could move them and get this exactly the way that I wanted to on the master cylinder. If everything is lined up correctly and everything is clean, you should be able to run the machined bolt into the threads of the master cylinder relatively easily. I'm finger tightening this up and it's touching both of the copper crush washers. I'll be using a 3 quarter inch flare nut wrench to tighten that bolt finely and crush the copper crush washers. You also could reach in with a socket and a ratchet from the front side of the cylinder and do the same thing with an extension. I'm comfortable with a flare nut wrench so I'll use that. It's very important to get a proper seal with the crush washers. It's a little difficult to get them with the wrench, but you can. And make sure that your brass Y is facing down and your lines are in the proper position before you fully tighten this. Once you think you've got it tight, try to get another eighth inch to a quarter inch turn just to ensure that you've crushed those copper washers and made a proper seal. The shorter of the two brackets that goes to the front flex hose is mounted over the top of the bracket that the engine mount goes on. All you do is thread in the threads into the flex hose that we installed in part number two. And again, I'm just going to finger tight these. I'll go back after everything is said and done and tighten everything up fully with a flare nut wrench. Next, I'll install the brake lamp switch. It's got two connections on the end for the wires and a male threaded fitting on the opposite end. If you remember from the beginning of the video, it fits into the female threads on the front side of the machined bolt. This threads in pretty nicely by hand. You'll want to get it as tight as you can without using the two connections for the wires in any sort of way or applying a tool to them because it's difficult to get any sort of wrench inside to do the final tightening. To prevent damage to the switch as best I can, I just simply wrap some electrical tape around the teeth of a pair of slip joint players. I can reach inside the frame with this pretty easily and even though moving in small increments, I'm sure I can tighten the switch onto the threads. If you were doing this job or replacing the switch with the tub and the fenders on the vehicle, you could remove the heat shield from underneath side on the frame and it would allow easy access for you to do so. Once you feel the threads bottom out, try to get another eighth to a quarter inch turn just to ensure you have a proper seal. Let's go to the rear of the Jeep and install the rear brake line to the flex hose. If you remember that bend I showed you earlier on the bench, that fits right up inside the crossover tube where the machine gun mount is. You may have to do a little adjusting here to get the fitting to go correctly and fit properly into the fitting on the flexible rubber line. Note the small hole in the cross member on the center of the screen. You want to run that brake line up against the back side and then towards the front side like this and then that turn or bend will fit into the fitting on the rubber hose. Once you get everything lined up the way you'd like to, finger tight the fitting for the time being. Let's trace the line back down to the outside of the frame rail so I can show you again how that goes up against the back side. You can go ahead now and use the clip on the side of the frame rail to secure your line. Make sure your line clips into the bottom side of the clip and is fully secure. I was fortunate enough when I removed the original brake lines that the original clips and screws and fasteners were still attached. I've cleaned them up and I've primed and painted the clips with OD green. Go back to the pre-drilled hole on the inside of the cross member on the frame and simply attach the clip to its location and then press the clip tight and line up the holes with the holes on the outside of the frame. Install the screw with the slotted head facing inward toward the cross member. Then we can go on the outside and we can install the lock washer and then the nut. These fasteners secure the line to the inside of the cross member and make sure that it doesn't fall out or get displaced while the vehicle is moving. I've got a special screwdriver that I found in the toolbox. It's angled very short so I can fit inside tight spaces just like the cross member and hold the slotted head on the screw and tighten the nut with a small wrench. A second clip is located on the frame rail right in front of the clutch lever assembly. We'll install the clip in the fastener the same way we did on the rear cross member. Make sure your lines are nice and tight against the inside of the frame rail. Go on the outside of the frame rail and install the lock washer and the nut and tighten them up with a screwdriver and a small wrench. I'll go back now and tighten all of the fittings on the lines. To make it easier to get at the fittings on the brass Y in front of the master cylinder, I'm going to go ahead and turn the steering wheel all the way to the right to move the pitman arm forward so I can get a flare nut wrench in between the block and the Y fitting and easily tighten them. Use a flare nut wrench and work at them horizontally between the block and the brass Y fitting. 
Let's take a look at the final assembly, and I'll draw your attention to this piece of asphalt-coated loom here on the front line. That line in later models, probably 44 and on, was attached to the frame rail. This is a 43, so it's not. If yours is a later model, there's a good possibility that there's a clip there that that asphalt loom is attached to. I'm going to leave it on the line to protect it from the frame. If you wanted to be completely historically correct, you could just simply cut the loom off of the line. We'll take the camera and we'll follow it back. Pay close attention to the location of the Y, where the line goes out the side and goes down the side of the rail on the driver's side. There's our clip behind the lever assembly. From behind the clutch lever assembly, it travels down the frame, outside the frame on the side to a clip, and then up inside the rear cross member, which is attached with another clip, and then ends at the rubber flex line on the rear cross member at the fitting in the center of the cross member. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video helpful and informative and it helps you out with your personal project. The next couple of videos we'll be doing, I'll actually be adjusting the brakes and I'll show you how to put the fluids in there and make sure things blood out and works correctly. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe and happy jeeping. And once again, if you'd like to follow along what we're doing with the project in the 1943 Willis MB, you can do so by subscribing to us at Team G503 on YouTube.